Good evening, everybody. It's very nice to be with you all tonight. Uh, I'm always very pleased to meet other blockchain fans like myself. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience working with this technology and a little bit about SmileyCoin. So last year, one of, the, one of my professors at the University of Iceland contacted me and offered me a job working on his cryptocurrency, SmileyCoin. Uh, I accepted the job, although at the time I did not know much about cryptocurrency or blockchain or anything like that. I knew of Bitcoin, but I had no idea how it worked or what it was all about. So I remember my first meeting with Gunnar, the professor. Uh, he was going over all the things I was supposed to do and what my main priorities were going to be. And I did not understand much. He had this big board up in his office. He started drawing the blockchain, drawing the blocks, and I did not understand much. And he just looked at my face, saw my confused face, and just said, you'll get there, you'll get there. And I did. I uh, read a book, and I Googled a lot, and I learned a lot more about this technology. And I thought, wow. This is so clever, this is so amazing. And uh, I became sort of uh, obsessed with it. And obviously, I didn't talk about much else for the next couple of weeks. And I got very mixed responses from people. Some were very interested and asked me a lot of questions and wanted to learn more and wanted to know what this was all about. Some people couldn't be bothered to listen to me for more than 10 seconds. And then there were the people who just had a hard, under, hard time understanding what it was I was talking about. I remember my mom's sister asked me one time what it was I was doing at my job. And I started telling her a little bit about cryptocurrency and blockchain and stuff like that. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm explaining this really well. She must be understanding everything I'm saying. And then... After about a five minute explanation, I ended it by saying, and the cryptocurrency I'm working on is called SmileyCoin. And she looked at me and had this smile on her face and said, ah, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. You're talking about those little smiley faces I sent on the Facebook chat. <laughs> and I just said, yeah, close enough, close enough. But to tell you a little bit about SmileyCoin, it is a cryptocurrency, and it's a part of a bigger project called Education in the Suitcase, which is an educational project run by Gunnar, the professor. And a part of this project is also a software called TutorWeb. And TutorWeb is basically a big database of multiple choice questions in math and statistics. And Gunnar uses this technology in some of the courses he teaches at the university. So his students log into the system, answer questions in math and statistics, and each time they get a question right, they earn smiley coins. And the more questions they get right and the better grades they get, the more smiley coins they get in return. So in that sense, smiley coin is uh, somewhat of a rewarding system in education. And students can then spend these smiley coins to buy movie tickets or cups of coffee or exchange them for other coins. And smiley coin is supposed to encourage students to study harder and study more uh, and just do better. But a bigger goal of education in the suitcase is to bring, uh, give more students access to education and they have been focusing a lot on lower income areas in Kenya. So what they do is they uh, bring computers and other soft uh, hardwares like tablets and stuff like that with pre-installed educational softwares like TutorWeb and other educational materials and give these computers and tablets to low income students in Kenya and give them away for free. And Many of these students are children that have never been on a computer before or have never even seen one. So there they get the opportunity to 
on their own computer and practice their mathematical skills to get into better schools later on. And I know uh, a future vision for education in a suitcase is for lower income students to be able to work their way up to a more expensive higher education using this uh, rewarding system in education with uh, cryptocurrencies and smiley coins. Uh, but smiley coin is also a somewhat of a donation system because the students in Iceland can donate their smiley coins to the education pro suitcase project and everyone can donate real money to the project and receive smiley coins in return. And the, uh, the project then uses this money to fund their computers and fund their trips out to Kenya to deliver them. But uh, the main project that I worked on, uh, on Smiley Coins, was number one, was to implement a sort of an interest system in the coin. So what we did were, was we uh, took all Smiley Coin addresses that had more than a certain amount of smileys on it and marked them as rich addresses. And with every block mined, uh, one of the rich addresses which, which would receive a part of the mining reward. So with that, we wanted to encourage people to hold on to their smiley coins and not spend them right away or exchange them right away. And with that, we were trying to get more users of the coin. But another project I worked on was uh, to solve a problem we had with the coin. Because smiley coin is still a rather small coin, we don't have a lot of people mining it, so it doesn't take a lot of mining power to mine blocks on it. But once in a while, these big uh, mining pools would switch to our coin and start mining it with their big mining power, and they would mine a larger number of blocks in a very short time, causing our difficulty level to shoot up, and then they would just leave and leave us to deal with a mess. And our regular miners and mining poolers didn't have that much of a mining power, so it took them a long time to mine blocks and get the difficulty level back down. So what we did was we implemented four other algorithms into the system uh, so that each miner and each mining pool could choose their own mining algorithm to, work to mine on. And the rule is that you can only mine five blocks in a row with the same algorithm, and then you have to switch. And if one algorithm has a very high difficulty level, miners can just switch to another algorithm, and with that, keep the chain going. But we also had uh, other small projects we worked on. One of us was working on analyzing just all the data in the blockchain, and he put it all in this big graph where where the, bit, uh, the smiley coin addresses were nodes and the transaction were edges. And the more transactions related to some address, the bigger the node. So it turned out to be this really big graph, looked like a solar system or something like that. So it's really interesting to see how the network was spread around. But we also had some other projects, like uh, Gunnar wanted us to experiment with putting some other information inside the chain, uh, not just information about the coin. So we, for example, experimented with putting messages inside the chain and stuff like that. And I know that Gunnar has a lot of ideas for putting some other information inside the blockchain and using it for something more than just uh, for in information about the smiley coin itself. And I, for one, think that's really exciting because I think the blockchain technology has a lot of room for ideas and experimentations. And I, for one, am very excited to see the future of this technology. But I think that's going to be it for me. So thank you very much. <laughs>